This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. First of all, just thank, as you've already heard, thank First Five for their, for their effort and their support, to thank um, LA County Mental Health already for their collaboration and support, and also to thank you. Um, this helps me fulfill my mission, which I suspect is very close to what your mission is, which is to improve the quality of life for children and families. And, and I've selected PCIT as a way of doing that because I think it is a very effective strategy to do that. But the overall mission really is to improve children and family, to improve relationships between kids and their mothers and their fathers. Um, and, and this is a remarkable effort that, that I think, although it's a rather significant thing to say, it is really going to change the landscape, not just of mental health and Los Angeles County, but to be replicate, replicated in a lot of other places. So it's really a significant effort. M my goal for today really is just to give you an understanding of what PCIT is, if you don't understand yet, to give you some background about why it's, how it works and why it's an important intervention, what things that it can do. To talk a little bit about our training model and then we're gonna be followed by some of the information that we have um, about this particular project. So really just an understanding of what PCIT is, and there's two components, and I'll talk about them, relationship enhancement and then a discipline um, part. How it works, what makes PCIT work? How do we go about improving parenting skills, improving the quality of the relationship between parents and children, decreasing child behavior problems, which is how really PCIT came to be, um, and then also to talk a little bit, and I know a lot of people are not particularly interested in hearing about numbers and seeing graphs, and I do have a couple of graphs to just give you a head start about it, but I really want to talk to you about some of the things that make PCIT work and our demonstration of them both at UC Davis and with our colleagues around the country. Um, and then finally, we'll talk a little bit about um, a web course that we're very proud of that just actually is, is got finished and is coming out about training people in PCIT for traumatized children. And I'll talk a little bit about the models that we have that'll be um, used here in, in Los Angeles County. Um, I'll try to also make sure that we have an opportunity to do um, some questions and answering as soon as I'm done. One of the things that I wanted to make sure that we did, if you don't already know what PCIT is, just to show you um, um, a little bit about how PCIT works. And the, the history of PCIT, I think, is a, a precursor to that. PCIT was initially developed by a lady by the name of, of Sheila Eiberg, who just recently retired a few months ago um, from the University of Florida. But if you take a step back further, this isn't a history lesson necessarily, but there was a lady by the name of Constance Hanf at the um, University of Oregon Health Sciences back in the 60s, mid 60s and the 70s, who came upon this really incredibly interesting um, idea that rather than having a parenting program where you tell parents to do something and then you send them out the door to go do that thing with their child, wouldn't it be interesting to tell parents how to do something while they in fact are interacting with their child in real life time. So this idea was, was created by um, Constance Hanf, um, and, and a lot of what we talk about when we talk about PCIT has this germination from Dr. Hanf, but really been developed into a very sophisticated model by, by Dr. Eiberg, and then of course the great um, contribution of Dr. Eiberg is really to put it in together as a sort of conceptual whole and uh, to demonstrate it through a very sophisticated and fairly simple way to assess parent-child relationships and how children and families move through the course of treatment. So I think recognition needs to go to um, Dr. Hampton, particularly to the developer of PCIT, Sheila Eiberg. That said, given that that's the brief history lesson, um, it's important to understand just sort of what we're talking about. So I have a brief video, it's about six minutes, that will show you that is a case study of, of a parent and a child um, that we've seen in our clinic. We were approached uh, several years ago to show a um, segment about a case study on video that would be published for television. And, and we found this family and they agreed to do this. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it'll give you a basic sense of what we're talking about with regard to PCIT. Oh, 
When two-year-old Richard looks into his mama's eyes, he knows the true meaning of tender, loving care. His older brother, Doyle, hasn't always been so sure. He was so afraid. He was in the corner, shaking, you know, back then, scared, you know. He would run to a stranger before he would run to me. An 18-year-old single mother with limited parenting skills, Tammy Victor was raising her children in the same abusive way she had been raised. I slapped my son. I threw him at a wall. I kicked him. Um, punched him, slapped him, you know, all those scream, holler, cursed at him, threw him around, you know, all those mean things to, to that boy. Ultimately, Tammy herself called the police and asked for help. What she got was six months in jail for child abuse. Richard and Doyle were put into foster care until the courts were satisfied they would be safe with their mother. So I went to go visit my kids, and they were just sitting there looking at me, laughing, hi, mama, you know, I love you, and, you know, like that. I'm like, hmm, okay, why do they love me? What? How can they love their mom? That's all I put them through. How, how could I get love back from them? If you're four years old, regardless of what your mom or dad does to you, you still love them, you still need them. You don't just need them as a figure, you need them every single day in your life. Anthony Urquiza is a psychologist at the UC Davis Medical Center. He oversees a new program there aimed at helping abusive parents find new ways to discipline. Like Tammy, most of his clients are sent to him through the courts. It's a last ditch effort to get their kids back. We had to change the relationship and we had to fundamentally change some of the things that parents do with their child. Um, to make them be better parents. Mommy has something to tell you guys, okay? Now, this is special playtime, okay? And special playtime, we play nice with all the toys. This one-on-one -on -one therapy session uses a traditional parenting model called PCIT, Parent-Child Interaction Therapy. Urquiza hopes the basic parenting principles of PCIT will teach Tammy a better way to get her kids to behave. You need to praise your child for the things that they do or that are appropriate. You need to describe appropriate behavior, give them a lot of attention for what they're doing that's okay and appropriate. And as soon as they do something that's not appropriate, then to ignore that behavior. You might want to go into it, ignore and start playing with Doyle. And, and, and gosh, I'd love to play with Richard if he were sitting nice at his seat. Yeah, if Richard was sitting nice at his seat, he could play with us. Through an earpiece, Tammy is being coached by a therapist to praise good behavior and ignore the bad. Not an easy thing to do when Richard is in the midst of a temper tantrum. It's this kind of situation that used to result in abuse. If you come up with us and play, we could have, have so much fun. Great ignoring oh, Tammy. Really, yeah, really good ignoring. So much fun with us, but that's okay. It's great because you are in control right now. The research bears it out. By breaking down old abusive patterns, Tammy is helping her children build self-esteem. And as an inherent bonus, she is becoming a better parent. You have to give them some skills, but you also have to change the quality of the relationship so that it is self-sufficient in generating a lot of the empathy, a lot of the positive attention. That's what we have to change so that parents, even when they're at their most frustrated, are still not going to hit their child. Okay, Tammy, why don't you turn to Richard and pat him on the back and kind of rub his back and say, I like it when you're quiet. Yeah, I know. Oh, Richard, I like it when you're quiet. I'd really like for you to come back and play at the table. I'd really like for you to come back and do special play time with us. Here's where Tammy must apply her new skills. Richard's temper tantrum has lasted a very trying 15 minutes. Can she get her son to cooperate without being physically abusive? Would you come to the table for me? Oh, thank you so much. Great job. Yes. Oh. I think she has a really good chance to be safe with her kids in the future, to work with her kids so that they can be good, healthy kids, feel good about themselves, feel good about their mom. She's not out of the woods yet, but she's got a really good chance. You like this one? Okay. Quite often, children placed in foster care are not reunited with their parents. But Tammy has proven people can change when something as precious as a child is at stake. Good job! Doyle see me change, right? Doyle can grow up and say, okay, well, my mommy changed. 
Doyle knows now. You know, he, he, he has an idea that people can be different. Give me a hug. Oh, thank you. Learning to be a better parent is an ongoing lifetime lesson. And the court system believes Tammy has learned hers. Today, she has full custody of her sons. And Richard and Doyle have a mother who makes them feel loved and valued and safe. Happiness, a lot of happiness, a lot of fun times, a lot of uh, saying to myself and to my kids, you know what, we made it. Mommy made it. Great job. <laughs>So just to give you a little bit of history on Tammy, the mother who he had asked to do this, um, the last time I checked up on her, which a couple of years ago, um, she um, was able to sustain out of um, the um, CPS system, her children are not in, in trouble of her system, um, all three of her kids, she now has three kids, which goes to show that PCT is a really good intervention, but it doesn't help with birth control. Um, <laughs> All of her three kids are doing very, very well, and when I showed this to an early um, start program in Sacramento, one of the people in the audience said, I know this kid, referring to the older um, boy that in this video, and he said, he is just the coolest kid you could possibly imagine. He's a very well behaved, doing very, very well in school. So it's just a single case, but it's a reflection that we were able to help Tammy change the relationship that she had with her son, and of course she made some remarkable progress and change. She's a very strong individual. Um, but I wanted to show this to you just to give you a sense about what PCIT is. And you may, of course, have other questions like my program prov primarily provides in-home services, and this is a sort of an um, observation room clinic-based service, and, and I'll get to that, and we can provide PCIT on an in-home basis also, but there are other questions that you may have that, that I'll get to as we go through um, the afternoon. So what is PCIT? It is a dyadic intervention. Parents and children are in the room together almost all of the time, in which we coach, and it's the word we use, and you saw um, that um, lady who was actually talking to um, Tammy while she was playing with her sons. So via a shortwave FM signal, looks like a little bug in the ear, that Tammy wears in her ear, that we are whispering in her ear, literally whispering in her ear, while she is talking and playing with and interacting with her child. The, the difference is, between this and a parenting class, is in a parenting class they give you information and then they expect you to go home and do that. Well, with PCIT, the content, that parenting information, which we've known for decades, is all the same information, but the value in PCIT is we expect parents to practice, to learn, and to master those skills during the course of the session in front of us. So we're not just saying go do something, we are changing relationships in front of us during the session. And it's a remarkable thing to see over the course of a, a treatments, um, course of treatment, but also even within the course of a treatment session. And I often am um, surprised when therapists who are somewhat questioning about whether this is a good intervention for them, um, after doing a couple of sessions with PCIT in which they see parents change and they see kids change, then become converted. They say, this is a really cool thing. And the key here is, it's this idea that constants have created back in the 60s that is incredibly effective teaching model where we tell parents, we help them, we coach them, we provide reinforcement for some of the behaviors that they do in real life time. And it's really the most remarkable thing about PCIT, and I'm always a little surprised as to why other types of interventions don't utilize sort of the same methodology. Um, so essentially, it's a, it's a treatment that lasts roughly about 14 to 20 weeks, where we get kids who are referred to treatment because of oppositional defiant behaviors, essentially. Defiance, aggression, non-compliance, hitting, kicking, spitting, all of those kids, things. For kids who are roughly between the ages of about two and seven, two of eight years of age. Of course, it's a little bit different because this is really funded through first five, so we're talking primarily for first five funds for that population of about one and a half to two years of age, all the way up to five. Um, where it has two elements of treatment, one part, the first part, which we call child-directed interaction, where we work to strengthen and enhance the quality of the relationship between the parent and the child. Um, and then the second part is where we essentially help parents to discipline 
their child. All kids need to be able, or all parents need to be able to discipline their kids, and, and PCIT has an effective strategy to do that. It is assessment driven. We do a pre treatment, we do a mid treatment, and a post treatment, and we assess every single session as we go through treatment. So we are able to work with parents and build upon their strengths as we move through treatment. Um, and really, the issue is it's not just telling parents to do something, it's providing them with that information and then coaching them so that they hear about what it is that they're supposed to be doing and then they're able to implement it and work with their child right then and there. Um, the first part of PCIT, we call it child-directed child interaction. Um, really, um, the other word that we use, or words that we use, are called relationship enhancement because that's what the focus is. We're just utilizing these five words, we call them the pride skills, to get parents to um, use these as a normal part of their every single interaction they have with their child. Why do we use these things? Because back in the early days, in the 60s and the 70s, Sheila Eiberg, and there's a reference to Diana Baumrein before, Sheila Eiberg realized that these are the basic elements to having a healthy relationship with your child. Being able to praise your child for appropriate behavior, being able to, a reflection, essentially say back to them um, something that they said so that you, their child knows that they're listening to, to imitation, to engage in the same kinds of behavior that, that your child is doing, to be able to describe appropriate behavior, and to do that with enthusiasm. So over the first course, roughly the first half of PCIT, we work with parents to develop these pride skills and to drop out any negative types of interactions that go on between the parent and the child. We expect them to master these skills. And I'll, and I'll tell you, actually, quite frankly, much of the power of PCIT comes in these five words. Being able to drop out negative interactions and consistently deliver these five things um, is really where, in at least in my opinion, much of the power of PCAT comes. And, and I say that because we often get kids who are incredibly non-compliant and aggressive and defiant. And we start them in PCIT, and before we even get to the discipline part, those kids are compliant and cooperative. And, and the, the example that I would give you is, if you think of the families in which you are familiar at your clinic, lots of times those parents don't deliver any positive statements to their child. And so these kids live in a world in which nothing, for lack of a more sophisticated word, nothing nice is ever said to them. And during the course of the first half of PCIT, we help parents to recognize those positive behaviors on the child and then to deliver them at the right time. And, and for most of our kids, for a lot of our kids, that's all they really need to hear. And their behavior improves just on the first half of PCIT. We also usually try to finish off with the discipline part, which is the second half of PCIT, which we, the acronym we use is really just Be Direct, um, or Parent Directed Interaction is the name of it. And I won't go through all of these, but essentially these are typical strategies that you use to get a child to comply with a direction. So about being specific, saying a, a single command instead of multiple commands, uh, being polite and respectful because that's modeling polite and respectful behavior. Um, these are the kinds of things that we are able to coach parents to do so that, and they, we coach them to do that in our clinic, in the treatment room, or in your treatment room, so that when they finished treatment, the quality of the relationship is improved. That's that child-directed interaction part and they're able to deliver effective commands with their children so their children are compliant, which is the second part of PCIT. I, want to, I have a couple of pictures here just to give you sort of a, a, an image of what a PCIT room looks like. This is the actual treatment room. You'll notice that it's got a table and chairs and some toys, but it's actually fairly barren. The reason for that is, PCIT kids come to treatment because they're aggressive and there's a few PCIT therapists in the room and I look at them and they're nodding their heads up and down. <laughs> they come to treatment because they're really aggressive and defiant. They hit, kick, they throw things, they destroy rooms sometimes. And so I shudder at the thought if you're familiar with a sand tray therapy room. <laughs> it's a scary notion of having a PCIT type child in a 
play therapy, sand tray therapy room because it would be just a disaster. So we, we're thinking ahead. We've, we've been down this road before, and the room is fairly barren. There's less things that get thrown at parents, and the things that do get thrown usually are not those big, heavy metal or wooden blocks, which hurt. So this is a typical PCIT room. The next slide is the other side of the observation room. It's actually barren just because it happens to be. But there is a, a small um, table, um, and then there's the observation room off to the left. And there is some, actually, electronic equipment that's in the cabinet. And then the next slide actually shows you a little bit of both. You've seen this in the video that we showed, where you have somebody who's coaching, and um, they're coaching somebody in um, the other room. Actually, this photograph, um, Michelle Wernerstein is somewhere. There you are. This is actually a trailer. One of the things I wasn't going to talk about, but since it's here, um, For the Child in Long Beach was one of the first agencies that we ever trained. They have a clinic um, where they do PCITs. We trained them in 2000, 2001. But it was so effective that they then purchased a mobile unit. Looks like basically a big Winnebago thing. Is it a Winnebago? It's a Winnebago. It's a Winnebago that is a treatment room, and it has an observation room, and it has a treatment room. So this is actually from their um, room. And this was um, Rod Mills, who's a therapist there, and then not, I don't know if they're real clients. But it gives you a sense of, of what the, the room and the observation room, the treatment room and the observation room look like. Um, and there's this other aspect of sometimes they just drive out to the schools and they do PCIT at the schools. I want to, I put this slide on here because, first of all, because there is a CDC report that came out a couple of years ago by Kaminsky, and if you're interested in it, I would love to send it to you. They did a meta-analysis of parenting programs to try to find out what are the critical elements that are necessary for an effective parenting program. And these are the things that they came up with. This is what the, the meta-analysis that Kaminsky did. Um, and the, the, the big three things that they felt were essential to having an effective intervention, increasing positive child interactions and emotional communication skills, which of course I just explained, PCIT does. Teaching parents to use a timeout or a discipline strategy. And the other one is encouraging consistency. And that encouraging consistency in PCIT comes from this process of coaching parents in real life times until they see that the things that we're telling them to do are effective with their child. And that's where the consistency comes. The bottom part of the slide I have here, and it says if you, it's too small and you can't see it in the back, it says information, skill acquisition, practice, mastery, and generalization. It's, it's really a key thing. It's, it's the learning part about PCIT. We provide them with information, and usually in a didactic form. We provide them the opportunity to practice parenting skills and practice parenting skills all the way until they master those skills. In order to successfully graduate from PCIT, you have to demonstrate that you've acquired these skills. You have a mastery of these skills, which then changes your child's behavior. And then we work to generalize. Generalize sometimes with, in, in my clinic means going work, working with them when they're going out to the car to get them in the car seat or get them in the seat belt or on or even in uh, the grocery store, wherever they're going, to generalize in the skills so that it's not just clinic-based skills. The last two things gets to um, a couple of points that I just wanted to remind myself about. When you're talking about something like PCIT, you really talk, with younger age kids, you're really talking about an intervention that targets attachment. And we've done a lot of research, Dr. Timmer's done a lot of research with a measure that's called emotional availability, which measures the quality of the parent-child relationship. The second one is a little bit more complicated. And, and the argument that I make is it's important to recognize that there's a set of attributions that often guide your behavior. And we know from an enormous amount of research about parenting attributions that a lot of parents have negative, predetermined beliefs about their child. So if their child were to do something inappropriate, sass them or smart talk back to them, that then reinforces this negative perception the parents have. If their child were then to do something neutral, not negative, this predetermined negative attribution ha is an overlay that the parent perceives as a negative interaction. So for example, 
if you have a four-year-old child who's getting up and has a bowl of milk, just finished breakfast, and they're moving it over to the sink, which a lot of kids do, it's a good thing. My kids never did that, but a lot of kids do. And they spill a little bit of what's leftover milk out onto the floor. You might think, it's a four-year-old kid, he's not very good with his dexterity, maybe his balance is not good, and so it's typical for them to spill the milk. A parent with negative attributions that are established and well-founded about that child doesn't have that perception. They think that's a bad thing. They made, spilled that on purpose. They have a lot of negative feelings and then they act on those negative feelings by yelling at the child, sometimes maybe punishing them or hitting them. And so the point I'm saying that is because these negative attributions often guide parents' behavior. If you're wondering, it's a whole other conversation, but if you're wanting to know about why kids get physically abused, it's often tied to negative attributions that parents have about their child. And I say that because it's more important, or I should say, it's not enough just to change behaviors. It's important to be able to change those attributions that parents have. Or the simple version is, we need to get parents to like their kids. I mean, that's the simplest way I can say it. And it's one of the things that PCIT does. It gets parents to like their kids, because it sets in place a whole different sets of attributions. So when Bobby is actually picking up his bowl of cereal, milk, taking over to the sink, the parent's immediate thought was, Bobby's being helpful, followed by, Bobby, you're doing a great job of cleaning up. Thank you for helping me clean up. Which, of course, in Bobby's sake, side, is very helpful because it reinforces that behavior that we want to see. So it's important not just to change the behaviors, but it's important to change the parent's attributions about their child. And the, the next slide, I think, is a demonstration, and I thought this is just a couple of minutes also. I, I thought it would be helpful for you to see actual coaching. You saw a little bit of coaching in the other video that you saw, but this is just a few minutes, and might even run it all the way through to the end, um, of Dr. Zibel, who's one of our um, trainers, um, coaching that we, we developed. So uh, let Susan run, and she'll just give you a demonstration of, of what it looks like in coaching. And this is actually um, not a real live client. This is a parent who volunteered to help us. If he leaves the chair again, then what I would like you to say is when Michael returns to his chair, then I can play with him again without speaking to him. Because when you speak to him, then you're giving him attention for leaving the table. That's why we use the third person. Just like that, when Michael returns to the table, as soon as he sits, say, thank you for sitting. Thank you for sitting. When you're sitting in your chair, I can play with you. You're sitting in your chair, I can play with you. It's much easier. A lot of fun. Mm -hmm. See how we're attending to the appropriate behavior. And when he does something that is inappropriate, you're withdrawing your attention. So again, what we were talking about, we were pretending <laughs> that he doesn't do well in school. So this is when you would give him positive attention every time he's doing something that you would like him to do at school. He's staying focused, he's attending to the toys, he's concentrating. Use all those types of words to describe the behavior you like. I am so glad that you are building such a Nice tower. Nice, nice bridge. That lets him know that you appreciate what he's doing. You're using beautiful colors. Another label place. You've got it so well. <laughs> I wish my parents at home got it this quickly. I really like it when you build a tower with me. It's a lot of fun. And since you're doing so well, I'm going to move you into another area where our children have difficulty. <laughs> and again, we're going to pretend. A lot of our kids have low frustration tolerance. So what I'd like you to do is to model something that is frustrating for you to do, and then to say, this is making me mad or frustrated. I'm going to count to 10 and then try it again. I think I'm going to sit back and relax and count to three. I think I'm going to sit back and relax and count. Nice deep breaths. Model for him. Perfect. One. Mm -hmm. Again. Two. two and again. Three. Mm -hmm. Now I'm relaxed. I'm going to try it again. I feel much better. You have shown me a much better way to build mm -hmm. this tower. And since I sat back and relaxed, 
it's working much better for me now. And since I sat back and relaxed, it's much easier for me to put the mm -hmm. pieces together again. Perfect. And it may look like Michael wasn't paying attention to you, He's but trust me, he was listening. And you were modeling for him how to relax, to stay calm, to get calm, to get his behaviors under control. That was perfect. somewhat so what I would do is just take that piece out that he threw in and whoops he's out of his chair so we'll switch gears again when Michael returns to his chair then I can play with him again well when Michael comes and sits back next to me sits in his chair then we can build the tower together perfect you're not looking at him which is perfect and we'll just say, oh he's sitting so thank you for sitting I can play with him Thank you for putting all the animals back mm -hmm. in the box when you were through playing with them. What I'd like you to do is take some of those animals out because before he somewhat threw them in, I'd like you to model how you put them in gently and describe what you're doing. I'm putting the toys in gently so that they don't get broken. Perfect, and you kept it with the eye form. Again, you're modeling the behaviors that you want. Children learn from you. You're his first teacher. Okay, let's go back to the pride skills, describing, reflecting, so that he knows that you're paying attention to him. The man is waving bye-bye to the cows. You have such enthusiasm. That's so nice. It's your smile and your eyes. That's what he wants from you. And that's why when he leaves the table and you say, I can play with Michael when he returns, that's why he returns, because of you. The man has a very flexible arm. Nice describing. His You're teaching him. moves very well. Mm -hmm. By describing that, teaches him language. It teaches him concepts. He's waving. Yes, See how he modeled? Good. By you describing, he modeled the very thing you're describing. And that's how you teach your children language. And I, and I will add to you, I've, I've seen literally thousands of PCT cases, and you have kids who are just playing with their things, and, and you think, he's not paying attention. And then a couple of minutes later, they'll do something, and in this example, Michael will go, ah, I'm gonna do this deep breathing thing like you just did a minute ago. Because they really do pay attention. One of the reasons I wanted to show this to you is just so you could see sort of a, the give and take about coaching and how it works. But you could also get a, a sense of how effective a teaching model this is because she's actually talking with a parent. One of the great frustrations that I have in the parenting world is people often talk about developmental expectations. You should have appropriate developmental expectations of your child. I'm not exactly sure what that is. But I have now a way in which you can tell a parent what's appropriate, what's not appropriate um, through this process of coaching. Because we often talk about to parents about, you know, your child's not holding the crayon correctly. Um, sh hold it correctly and show them how you're holding it. And that's the way in which we are able to um, model for parents and help parents to be able to interact with the child in a more developmentally appropriate way and develop more developmental developmentally appropriate expectations. I want to talk a little bit about some of the, an overview of some of the research findings that we have with PCIT. Clearly we have, and there's really been dozens and dozens of um, uh, random clinical trials of PCIT. What, one of the, the, the big things that we see are parents having more reflective listening, physical proximity, it's a fancy word for physical affection. Um, more pro-social ver verbalizations, again, another fancy words for being able to praise your child. Less sarcasm, less criticism, and more positive attitude. Um, and improved parent functioning, where parents become one of the more consistent findings we have with PCIT is less stressed in the role of parenting. Actually, we even have research in, in our program where parents who are depressed and enter PCIT have an alleviation of some of their depression as a result of going through PCIT, likely connected to the sense of stress that they have. Um, fewer psychological symptoms, greater sense of control, and a tremendously high satisfaction 
with treatment. Parents involved in PCIT really, really like being involved in PCIT. It is fun. Actually, I can go so far as to say my therapists in my clinic like doing PCIT because it is fun. Also, you get to see change, but it's just a fun thing to do. It's sort of like, not quite like going to Disneyland. Um, improved child functioning being fewer child behaviors, child problem behaviors, that's what PCIT was developed for. More improved um, responsiveness, um, cooperativeness, compliance on the part of the child, um, and then generalization of effects. That the research outcome, and Sheila Eiberg about five, six years ago did a research study found that the effect of being involved in PCIT lasted at least four, six years. It's really important because the parenting skills that you learn at the mean age of what you get PCIT, which is about three or four years of age, is qualitatively different than six years later. So kids who get PCIT when they're four are doing better when they are 10. So something else is going on besides just learning parenting skills. And my argument is it's really connected to the quality of the relationship between the parent and child. And then also generalization to untreated um, siblings, uh, that is the brother of the main primary client also has an improvement in his behavior. The main primary client also does better at school. So the changes generalize in different settings and to other siblings. The, the really simple version of what happens with PCIT is improve skill acquisition, and quality, decreased child behavior problems, improved quality of the parent-child relationship, decreases abuse potential. We now have a couple of studies that demonstrate that. Um, decreased child mental health problems. And then this side um, is important in that kids get better in other domains of their functioning. And what happens is when you are identified as a defiant oppositional child, it not only impairs your ability to have healthy relationships, it impairs your ability to be successful in school. So you decrease those child behavior problems, kids do better in school. So the next slide, I think I wanna talk about a little bit about culture. This is a really complicated, difficult topic, but I wanna make sure I at least touch on it because some people may wonder, okay, so how does PCIT work with Latinos or African Americans or um, um, Chinese families? And so I'm just gonna to touch on it. I would love to talk with you um, more about it, and it's clearly something we're continuing to work on. There has been a fair amount of research, a couple of uh, random clinical trials with PCIT with Puerto Rican families and Mexican American families from San Diego that demonstrates good outcomes. Um, also, with Chinese families, a random clinical trial, we were in Hong Kong training them, and they've done a wonderful job of uh, demonstrating the efficacy of PCIT, as well as with African American families. And we're working on the issue of acceptability of PCAT with Native American families and with Hmong families. The simple version is PCAT is effective. The more complicated version, I think, is it's effective in part and acceptable to much of different cultural groups because we're strengthening <laughs> families. We're not necessarily saying you have to do it this way, but we're recognizing and we're respecting the way in which a family culture functions and supporting that. And of course, almost all parent-child relationships to be healthy need to have some sense of positive affiliative behavior. A couple of quick slides about trauma. This is a research that we've done, Susan and I have done at UC Davis. Um, these are typical trauma symptoms that you see with young kids about trauma symptoms with nightmares, anxiety, behavioral disturbance, affective dysregulation. Traumatized young kids in PCAT were having a significant decrease in trauma symptoms. And of course that might raise the question, why is a parenting program having a decrease in child trauma symptoms? <coughs> the data support and what we have here are kids that are separated at pretreatment for having trauma high trauma symptoms or low trauma symptoms. And the blue bar are pretreatment and the red bar are post-treatment. And you see this is on the child behavior checklist, which probably most of you know. Um, um, kids have a significant reduction in internalizing behaviors from pre to post-treatment. Similarly, with externalizing, a, these traumatized kids have a significant reduction in externalizing behaviors on the child behavior checklist. The next slide is using the Parenting Stress Index, the PSI. 
Um, it's the same basic setup. Blue is pretreatment, red is post-treatment. Um, and we separated them out by parent distress, um, parent-child dysfunction, and difficult child. And you can still, still see the pattern. Basically, blue pretreatment goes down in post-treatment. This is the perception of the parent that their child is difficult, a huge drop from pre to post treatment um, on, for the trauma group. The last one is, if you're familiar with John Briere's um, TSEYC, the Trauma Symptom Checklist for Young Children, it's one of the better means of measuring trauma with a young age child. Um, and you'll see that same pattern um, even more magnified in this trauma group where um, the PTSD total is probably the greatest example, a huge decrease in trauma symptoms as measured by the TSEYC as a result of getting PCIT. The question then is, why do kids' trauma symptoms go down as a result of a parenting program? And, and, and we don't yet for sure know the answer, but I'll tell you what I think, mostly because I'm here and I've got a microphone. Um, <laughs> I think it's because we create an environment in which parents are more positive, parents are more predictable, there's greater positive reciprocity between the parent and the child, those attachment kind of things that we talked about. The continuity of this positive affiliative relationship between the parent and the child results in the child feeling more secure. And that, for young age kids, results in trauma symptoms going down. I'm not sure that we'd see that same effect with nine, 10, 12 year old kids, but for a population in which parents are so dominant in the daily life of kids, my opinion now is PCIT is also a trauma intervention. Two things I think I want to make sure that I point out to you um, in, with regard to training. One is we were funded by um, what used to be um, OCJP, the Office of Criminal Justice Planning for the state of California. In 1999, in 2000, we started training 13, a cohort of 13 agencies, one of which is for the child, the other one is Children's Institute International um, here in Los Angeles. Um, and that became the start of the PCIT Training Center. Um, and our go overall goal is to train a cohort of people at an agency who then take responsibility for training other people at that agency. We refer to those people as TOT. So usually we train four people who then become the resource, the trainers, the people who are supportive of the program within each agency. So we train trainers, the TOT program, trainer of trainer program, um, to be able to deliver effective services at their agency. And at the moment, we've trained about 110 community mental health agencies um, throughout California and other states. This is the vision that we have. It's just essentially consistent with what I started to talk about, really to improve the quality of, of parent-child relationships and the mechanism that we do is through use of PCIT. The next slide is actually just a map of some of the agencies that we've trained. You'll see that we are in Los Angeles and we roughly have already trained in LA County about 15 agencies, but we've trained people all up and down the state of California and a few other places also, but mostly we've been uh, focusing on California. These are really cool slides, if you're a slide person. I'm sorry for getting excited about slides, but these are really cool slides. <laughs> these represent the Iberg Child Behavior Inventory. Basically, the Iberg Child Behavior Inventory is a measure of behavioral problems that a child has. This is, each of these lines reflects data on the Child Behavior Inventory from an agency that we trained. So, this green line, I'm up close, I can't quite see if it's green, but it looks green. You see that there's a gradual, it goes straight across and then it drops down. That reflects an agency's data on clients that they've seen um, who we trained in PCIT. So we did not train these, we did not treat these people. We trained them and then they delivered PCIT to clients at their agency. These clients, we never saw. What this really is, is a demonstration of how good that agency is able to deliver PCIT without our involvement. And you'll see with all of these bars, all of these lines going across, the pattern is pretty much the same. That kids who come into these agencies with elevated problems on the Iberg Child Behavior Checklist at pretreatment, there's a slight decrease and an even more significant decrease, a slight decrease at midpoint and a significant decrease at post-treatment. Kids who were seen by people that we trained got better. 
which is wonderful. That's exactly what we want. I think it's also a testament to the fact that the training model that we use is effective. What that means for LA County and for you is if we train you to do PCIT, then the clients that you serve will get better. Assuming this holds, and certainly it has with all the agencies that we have. This is actually data from almost 270 clients in 10 agencies. We have more than that now. This is um, actually a second, um, that was the intensity scale, which is the severity of problems. This is a problem scale, which is a parent's perception of whether it's a problem. And you see the same pattern happens. Elevated at pretreatment, some decrease at mid-treatment, and at post-treatment, a significant drop. Parents' perception of their child as a problem is a significant reduction. And again, we never saw these clients. We trained the therapist. The therapist then trained the people their clients that they saw. The last one is um, the same thing on the parenting stress index where you see the same pattern. Really what this means is the model that we're using is effective. The people that we're training at your agencies are doing a great job. And, and that's remarkable because, again, I go back to my mission, which is to improve the quality of mental health services to children, to improve the quality of their lives. And this is a demonstration that we can, can in fact, do that. Given that, it gets us to what the model is and, and the last part of what my talk is, which is really this first five LA County Mental Health and UC Davis collaboration. And the model that we use, and I'll just talk briefly about some of the nuts and bolts, and then after I finish talking, I think we're gonna have a, a slight break and we're gonna make a shift. And some of the agencies that we have previously trained will be up here, and they'll talk a little bit about the training and the experience that they have with PCIT. Um, and then I think the LA County Mental Health people are gonna be talking specifically about this project and how it will be rolled out and, and what it'll look like. But for the first part, the training model. Um, in the first aspects of the training models, we provide consultation. We provide an expectation of what this program is, how to set up a room. Oh, I forgot to tell you, in case I showed you that video and I said, if you are an agency that provides primarily in-home services, how do you do that with a PCIT? Well, we train you on a clinic-based service. But once trained on a clinic-based service, you can do PCIT in somebody's living room. That bug in the ear thing, you can do in their living room by just sitting next to a parent and whispering in their ear while they are playing with their child. So the uh, expectation of having that equipment um, isn't there. You don't need that. We need to train you via um, a treatment room and an observation room, and the reason is in part because of our training model, which I'll talk about right now, but you can in fact do PCIT on an in-home basis. So when we do the program development, we talk about what's necessary, what the rooms look like, everything from A to Z. Um, we also talk with you about um, what we do with regard to uh, telemedicine or video conferencing technology. We have this unique ability to set up equipment so that we, UC Davis Medical Center, from Sacramento can look into your treatment room through the equipment that you have installed and talk to your therapist in real life time. At the same time, see and hear what your clients are doing. Because the model that we use with PCIT is we usually stand next to you while you're training you. And it's a, it's a parallel to the notion of training. When you learn how to do PCIT, somebody's talk, you're a parent, somebody's talking to you in real life time while you're interacting with your child. We've stolen that idea to train people. When you're learning how to do PCIT, somebody is standing next to you, even if it's from Sacramento electronically, <laughs> while you are treating a client in real life time. So we've, we've tried this out with several agencies. Actually, we're finishing up a project with um, 10 agencies all over the country at the moment. Um, and it's been very effective and very successful. So we are able to, in real life time, coach families in Denver, in Texas, in New York, in Washington, D.C., while they are treating clients in real life time. We are talking to them while they are coaching parents. And so we help agencies set up as part of this program development. 
Um, the first part after program development is we talk about um, basic knowledge about how PCIT works. <coughs> and what we do is we ask you to go to our web, web course. We finished creating a web course, and if you're familiar with the Trauma-Focused Cognitive Behavioral Therapy web course, it's a wonderful web course that's developed out of the Medical University of South Carolina. We stole their ideas, except for we do it with PCIT. Um, you can go to the web course, and the information is in your packet. It doesn't cost you anything. You can go this afternoon, um, and you learn about PCIT from A to Z, all the things you need to do to be a PCIT therapist, except the actual skill acquisition. You get the knowledge, but you don't get the skill acquisition. Skill acquisition comes from seeing clients and having somebody, somebody coach you. So the first part of PCIT is we ask you to, to actually up here, to, to do the web course, that we do a post web course assessment to make sure that you actually get this information. And then we set up the system via video conferencing technology for over a period of 11 coaching days, it takes us several months to do this, um, we are actually coaching you while you are coaching other therapists. We normally like a cohort of about four people at an agency that we train because we want to develop some expertise and some competence at the agency and because therapists migrate. It is the, one of the great mental health problems that I'm sure if you are supervisors and directors you, you know because when you look around the room you think that wonderful therapist I had is now working for her. They just do. They move to another part of the county. Their husband gets a job or their wife gets a job. They join the military. They become pregnant. They get promoted. All of these things happen. And you've lost this wonderful resource if you have then trained them up to be delivering an evidence-based practice. So our way of dealing with that is to train a cohort of people who then become the experts at the agency, understanding that one or two of those will go away, and you still have the program at your agency because one or two or three or four, sometimes even four of those people sustain over time. And so we do this video conferencing, coaching, until you reach a point of mastery in being able to deliver PCIT. And I might even, oh, here's an, a, a, actually just a sort of a, a picture of it. This is Lourdes, who's one of our trainers. By the way, everything in PCIT we've also translated into Spanish and work with a lot of Spanish-speaking families. Um, and Lourdes is bilingual. We have uh, another therapist who's bilingual, but Lourdes is a trainer who can train in both English and Spanish. Um, but basically, the communication, this is her really cool piece of technology. It's called a Cisco EX90. And if you don't like technology, I'm sorry, because this is really cool. <laughs> um, that basically looks like a Macintosh computer that sits on your desk. Um, and you, that George Jetson thing, when you, if you guys are old enough to remember George Jetson, where he would talk and look in real life time at somebody else that has a little television set on it, it's real and it's here and it's now. <laughs> so she is having conversations, but she is also able to watch in real life time and talk to people in just a normal tone of voice and just talk with them and they are able to see her, um, who, um, who a therapist and who then is treating a client. So it's a very cool piece of equipment, but I have to admit, I really like gadgets. So it's a cool piece of equipment because of that. And I think I'm about done because I want to thank you for, I want to answer any questions if you have any questions, and we'll take a, a transition and have, have a panel come up here. Um, but this is our, our website. There's also a web course that we have. Like I said, you can go this afternoon and check it out. Um, and we have a Facebook page. We just finished our 12th annual PCIT conference. Um, you see pictures of it from there. Um, some people here in the audience were at that conference. Um, we also LinkedIn, and if I knew what LinkedIn was, I would tell more about that. 